So hello to Starhawk. This is Mike Grenville from Transition Forest Row talking to us today on International Permaculture Day. Thank you very much, Starhawk. Um, Starhawk is uh, an author of um, many works, uh, many books, uh, a piece, environmental, uh, global justice activist, trainer, permaculture designer, and a pagan and a witch. And your latest book, The Empowerment Manual, a guide for collective groups, and uh, another ongoing project you've got is the movie, The Fifth Sacred Thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw on your website, you, you say, you know, uh, read here to say, how does it all weave together? And, mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> and uh, so I... Uh, I have a lot of sympathy for all these different things. I'm probably a little bit the same. So uh, how does it all weave together for you? How do, all these different things, what uh, what drives you to bring all these things together and how does it relate to permaculture? Well, I think for me what weaves them all together is the basic understanding that we live on an earth that's alive and that everything on the earth um, is part of that life force, part of that great being that makes up the earth and that everything is communicating. Uh, to me that means everything is sacred. Sacred in the sense, not you know, that it's something out there you bow down to, but in the sense that it's something that's really important and it's more important than your personal convenience or your profit. And when I discovered the permaculture after many, many years of being involved in the goddess movement and in environmental activism and other kinds of activism, permaculture seemed to me to be the practical application. You know, this is, it's the how to do it part of the earth is sacred. It means, uh, you know, I, I can do more than chant about the earth and sing about healing the earth. I can actually go out and take a piece of toxic out damaged ground and create something alive and healthy and beautiful on it that can actually feed people and to me that's a, a tremendous sense of empowerment yeah yeah you you i mean what i see the strand what i see very often is a separation between activism and the sense of the sacred and mm. um, activism is often driven by um we could say a sense of desperation sometimes <laughs> Uh, how do you um, uh, how do you see that this um, connection is is uh, becoming more lively, or is this a struggle in the activist world? Do you think? Well, I think a lot of activism comes out of a recognition that things are really wrong. You know, something's really gone wrong in the world, and um, you know, sometimes it's motivated by frustration or by anger or by outrage. Um, I think activism is most effective when we're saying not just this is really wrong, but also, and there's an alternative that could be really right. Yep. Um, again, to me, that's partly where permaculture comes in. And there's something you can do to move us from the wrong to the right. That's empowerment. Uh, for me, activism is a spiritual path. Again, if you believe the earth is sacred, and um, you can't just sit back and let idiots destroy her. You've got to do something. And doing that something, when you put yourself aligned with what you most deeply believe, that becomes also a path of personal growth and development. And all of the aspects of personal growth you might uh, find in any religious tradition, from meditation to interpersonal communication to facing your fears and your edges and beyond them, all of that is part of the path of activism as well. Yes, yes. It's, uh, yeah, it, absolutely. It's really um, the, uh, it, it's only then that it can be done uh, really holistically, really sustainably, really. We talk about sustainability, but it's sustainability for the activist that uh, is often forgotten. I think for me that's one of the reasons why it's helpful for activists to also have some kind of spiritual connection because, you know, what activism doesn't give you is the peace, quiet, you know, right? mm. <laughs> uh, It can have its moments of 
got a communion, but uh, there are usually pretty noisy ones. Uh, so having someone that you do kind of take some time, it's just a few minutes each day to be in nature, to be still, to find some place quiet enough that you can actually listen both to your own inner self and also um, to what the world is telling you, what those other living beings are speaking and communicating. That, to me, is one of the things that can sustain your life. As so we're, we're at a time of um, great uncertainty in, in so many regards. How, what, what's your feeling? How do you feel things will, uh, will work out? And how, what's your vision for, um, for the next year or so? going forwards you know I think we're at a really interesting time we're uh, we're at a crossroads and I I don't think it's determined how things will work out I think they could be very very good we could move into that beautiful world of permaculture and tolerance and connection and balance kind of like the world I envisioned in the sacred thing in the novel um, or we could go the other direction. You know, we could go into a very fundamentalist, right-wing, corporate-controlled, really fascist world where corporations have unbridled license to pollute the planet. Um, I don't know. So they're trying hard enough to push us in that direction. And I think if we do, we are reaching the limits of the planet's resilience, ability to bounce back from what we do. Um, we we could have a destructive impact that lasts for a, a long, long time. So I feel that it's a time for all of us, you know, to really step up and do everything we can to push us in the direction of balance. Um, and for those of us who are involved with current culture, I think this is a really good time for us to step up and step out, uh, to share our vision as widely as we can, not be afraid to step into big projects and mainstream things because, you know, permaculture has always been kind of an edge piece, which we all know is a very creative place to be. But I think for us to actually have the impact we need, we have to be willing to also kind of be the mainstream and become the mainstream. Mm. Yes, I think that's that's the that's the the challenge, isn't it? When you've been on the when you've been on the edge, and uh, you've always feel you're on the outside, to actually, and people not listening to you, to actually uh, have to step up to the responsibility that people might actually take what you're yeah. saying seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that's rather frightening, but you know, we all got to face that fear and go forward. Because, uh, we will make mistakes, but uh, you know, it's clear. <laughs> I think there's a Native American saying that says, if we don't change our direction, we're going to wind up where we're headed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's great stuff. Thank you. That's really inspiring. Thank you so much for all that you do and um, for these um, these short, inspiring words. You can find uh, all the other talks on uh, the website permacultureday.info for all the interviews for this. Thank you so much, Starhawk. Thank you, and thanks, Mike, for doing this.